Hey there and welcome, my name is Carlos Berdes and let's start talking about what has been going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being directly sponsored by anyone mentioned here unless explicitly said or mentioned otherwise. Some links, they may be affiliate links so that they can benefit me without cost you anything extra and all the links they'll be in the description together with some timestamps so that you can jump to the point of your preference. And we start this episode talking about the pre-order for Chalice 4th edition by Monkey Spa Games. Main changes from 3rd to 4th edition are in layout and editing. And if you buy the physical edition, which is in an A5 hardcover, including a navy blue ribbon, bookmark and all that jazz, it also includes the PDF version. But more on the game, it is a solo journaling game in which you play a grail seeking knight in Arthurian England. And you will chronicle your journey and story, both physical and spiritual, in this path. And you will ult ultimately fail to find the grail, okay? How will your chivalric virtues evolve during this quest? Well, you play with a deck of tarot cards and just something to journal, actually. And the book will be shipped during Q4 2022, so go check it out. And this week we had the release of Winnie the Pooh Brief RPG by John Witters. Originally it was written for the Winnie the Pooh game jam, but it took a little longer to be published and we are familiar with the, co the concept, it happens all the time. And in it you play enjoying your time in the 100 acre woods with the other players. There is a PDF and a doc format which I welcome as it helps accessibility wise. It explores a bit of Winnie the Pooh stories and meanings and use a simple system with only 5 stats and each character having a quirk. It's simple but effective. I would say so to check it out and even more that it is free. And by WTF Studio, we just got the release of Dead City Memories first volume, The Memorialist. It is a zini that is a quarter crawler sandbox of part of a vast city being despoiled by an invading army. Players are agents of an alien godlike entity trying to preserve the treasures and records of a fallen creature. Actually, culture. It is not system agnostic, but it's really easy to run with any OSR-like or D20 system in general. You have different regions with the different quarters inside of it, spells, creatures, archetypes, a bit of all. This is just the first volume, so you can expect more content for the setting coming your way as well. And oh, the art is just lovely as well, so you can check it out, give a look, and if, you, if it strikes your fancy, go and buy it. And In the Blue Light by Chris Bissett from Loot the Room is finally out. It is an adventure for Morkborg. It is a frozen dungeon crawl that we already mentioned here in a previous episode. And it is now fully available. You can get the text-only version for free to help you decide if you want to commit to it, which for me is always a great one, a great way to really check it out and then if it strikes your fancy then you just commit and you buy it. And it doubles as another option for accessibility, since you have just the free only text option. The adventure is to be played over two or three sessions and you go beneath the barren waste of Kyrgyz where an ancient artifact holds the power to stop the miseries afflicting the world. And it's buried beneath the ice and you can even try and dig some treasures that were frozen into the city itself and into the icy walls and become rich, okay? However, if you take too long into the icy vaults, you can be trapped there forever. The dungeon changes with time as the ice shifts and it melts and starts getting frozen again while the adventurers are exploring it and the time passes. Overall, a great experience. Well perhaps not that great for the adventurers, even more if they get stuck down there. And now I want to bring to your attention two games by Angry Nerd Girl. First of them is Just Gals Being Comrades. It is a GMless game where players take the part of female or femme communist activists working underground in the days leading to a massive action to change their country forever. Also, they are secretly in love with the other characters. With the same system, and also by Angry Nerdgirl, there is also And They Were Daughter Maids. 
in this gemless game, then you are clustered into uh, a nun. You are actually clustered nuns in a medieval convent in a time shortly before a dissolution or suppression of monasteries and convents. And obviously, they are secretly in love with with each other and the other characters. You will never lose your faith, but you may lose them. So, what are you going to do? On Gems, we bring to your attention the interesting system fictional game jam. It goes one step further than system neutral. The idea is for you to create adventure setting supplement uh, whatever, but for fictional primary text. So, Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it, this fictionary primary text can be a fictional game, but the main idea is for it to be ambiguous. It is neither to be a system neutral title, neither a title for a specific system. Got it? You have up until October 15th to submit, and you can submit as many titles as you like. So you have plenty of time and chances, opportunities to try and explore the concept itself. Another gem is Are You Afraid in the Dark? It is a Forged in the Dark gem, and all entries will feature in the Are You Afraid in the Dark bundle that will run during Halloween. You have up until September 13th to submit your game with horror or horror adjacent team, and it must be based on the Forged in the Dark system. Okay? On Articles and Threads, an interesting read on the famous polygon by Chase Carter. I tend to enjoy his text. On the indie scene, it talks about the complicated issue of third-party licensing this time and how the Big Dragon game approaches it. On top of that, it can mean to the what it can mean to the indie tabletop RPG scene as a whole. It is true that it focuses a long part of the text on the Big Dragon game, and this is totally not our idea here and in the news, but it offers interesting points of view for the indie space as well as it is worth the read and at least in my opinion, so if you want you can check this one. And last, but certainly not least, there is an informal group of international indie tabletop RPG creators, designers, publishers trying to influence each I.O. to evolve and change to better incorporate some of the needs of the indie tabletop RPG scene. Okay, we are all aware that each I.O. is one of the main platforms that the indie tabletop RPG scene uses, so they are trying to bring some sensible suggestions and I encourage you to check them and if it resonates with you to sign the form as well. So we know that each has a lot of problems, it works well for some things, but it can be much better for the indie tabletop scene. So go check this one out and if it really are suggestions that you agree with, sign the petition. Okay, for today, I believe that's it. If you like the video, like the video, share, subscribe, you know how internet works. You can pay me a coffee in coffee, you can buy my games on each.io. Uh, let me know in the comments what you are liking about the series, disliking, I am trying to answer all of them, and I will see you all in my next video. So, see ya!